Okay, so the first thing I'm working on for this Marvelers book look is going to be the wig. <laughs> and this is how it first came out from the bag. I will link down below which brand of wig this is, but I was really looking for a blue wig that kind of matched the tone of the book cover, which I'll insert uh, somewhere on the screen here. I don't have the physical book yet, but when I get it, you'll see it all together. The cover has this really, really pretty blue tone to it, and I wanted a blue wig to style to go along with it. Um, this one, I believe the brand came with three different lengths of wigs. I wanted to go with the shortest one and the shortest one was eight inches. We're going to practice. We're going to see how we're going to style this today. Um, the kind of rollers I'm going to use, I've never used before, but we're going to see. We're going to try and make it work. Typically, whenever I'm styling, uh, styling wigs, specifically long wigs like from, um, the Bells or the Cruel Prince or Shadow and Bone from the Christiaverse, any of the longer wigs that I typically use, I usually use these um, flexi rods. But today I'm going to attempt to use, have these mesh rollers, which will give me more of this Marilyn Monroe type of swooping, sweeping type of design that I want. And then if I don't have enough of these, I have some of my other Velcro rollers, which I'm gonna attempt to try. But this is the first time I'm going to try and style a short wig, so hopefully, hopefully it just, hopefully it just works out. But the first thing I like to do is brush out my wig. I am by no means at all a hairstylist or a wig professional, but this is just something that I've learned doing, uh, practicing with wigs, wigs that I like to do. And it's just, I like to brush it out just to see how it looks. And I know for this style, I kind of want, I want to mimic my natural part, and I usually part my hair on the right. So for this. I know the wigs parts right there in the middle, which is also cute, but not what I want. I can either put it this way, but I don't know if I like that because it'll lengthen the side. So I can either move my part to the side or as I'm curling, I'm probably going to see if I can create a new part. But I typically like to listen to audiobooks while I'm working on props and accessories. So I might do a quick speed through this while I go listen to some audiobooks right now while I work on this. Wow. <laughs> I opted to force a new part on the wig and after pinning the wig down, I spritzed it with water and used my foam rollers and some separating clips to roll the hair away from the new part I was making. The inspiration for this hair is more based on how I style my own hair when I curl it. I donated 14 inches of my hair and I'm really embracing my new, shorter haired self. I was toying with the idea of painting my hair as well for this look, similar to the Marvelers cover color palette, but figured it would be harder since my hair is so dark. I also wanted to try and challenge myself by trying to style a shorter wig now that I have uh, less hair to shove underneath the wig. Plus, I thought the blue color from the wig would be cool for this librarian slash third year Marveler library aid character I was going for. I have one whole side, at least the front side that you'll see on camera, all rollered off. I'm gonna get this other side as well. I'm not too concerned about the back, though I am gonna curl it, but I think I'm gonna save my flexi rods for this just so I can prioritize and utilize my foam rollers toward the front so I can get the swooping motion that I'm hoping I achieve with this. But yeah, let's keep going. Oh, but uh, before I continue, so let me go get my face chart real quick. <laughs> So along with the book cover's color palette, which again, I don't have the book, but I will provide a picture of it somewhere on the screen here. <laughs> um, but for the wig, my main inspiration for the whole look, especially for this wig, comes not only from the color palette, but also from the different paragons inside of The Marvelers. Uh, if you haven't read the book yet, uh, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil what it's about, but in the world of The Marvelers, there are these Marvelers, which are essentially people who have magic abilities. And at the academy that Ella Duran goes to, each of the students that go there, they are sorted into different paragons based on their marvels. So each one is based off of almost if you could say probably like a bodily sense so there's um let's see there's a paragon of the eye hand ears taste um i think heart and i think spirit don't quote me on that completely uh but i'll correct myself in a second if i'm saying it all wrong but my main inspiration came from a, a, a very special scene from the ending of the book and i want to be a marveler that had something to do with an eye paragon <gasps> sorry my cat's jumping on the couch so for this i wanted to kind of have i wanted to represent the star posts that are being featured in the book and i really wanted to be if i was a character in the marvelers i would want to be either a librarian or someone who works with um divination 
of some sorts. So I really wanted to embody the blue tones, especially too, if you're, if you're a Marveler and you end up going to the Academy um, or the Arcanum, then um, each of the years are split off by colors. So Ella, the main character, she wears white when she comes in. That's like kind of what all the freshmen wear. But if you go up to like second years and third years, third years, which I think are the highest year, um, they all wear blue. My character, I would either want to be a teacher or I would want to be um, one of the older kids wearing blue. Uh, especially because of the book cover colors. So for my wig, I wanted some kind of like swoopy, short, pixie kind of, not pixie, but short, uh, cutesy kind of cut. And then I wanted star post flying around and I still have to make those. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the inspiration for and the, the look that I'm going to be trying to achieve on this book look. So wish me luck. <laughs> my back has a piece jumping on the counter. You're not allowed on the counter. No, Kasha. I've been spraying my wig with water just to make it a little bit easier for me to handle the hair. This is not at all a styling spray. This is actually my cat spray. So anytime that my cats misbehave or if they're jumping up on something they're not supposed to, I squirt, squirt them with this. But right now we're gonna, uh, it has two purposes right now. One to watch my kitty cats and two to work on my wig. My doggy's asking to come back inside. If you haven't read The Marvelers yet, I highly, 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 highly recommend you do so. It was and still is my favorite read of 2022, and I'm eagerly awaiting book two. Just to give a quick synopsis to give y'all a taste of the story, as well as my main inspirations for this book look, The Marvelers is Clayton's middle grade debut fantasy adventure set in a global magical school in the sky. 11-year-old Ella Durant is the first conjurer to attend the Arcanum Training Institute, where Marvelers from around the world go to study magic. But she soon learns being the first isn't always the easiest and marvelers aren't very welcoming to conjurers. During her time at the Arcanum, a notorious criminal escapes from prison and it is rumored that a conjurer helped them escape. This causes Ella to be the target of even more nasty rumors that end up affecting her experience at school. On top of this, her favorite teacher and mentor has also mysteriously gone missing. So now not only does Ella have to clear her and her conjurer family name, find her missing mentor all while trying not to lose her spot in the Arcanum forever. Stakes are very, very high in this book and it was such a fun, magical, whimsical ride. I wanted to live in it, hence the book look inspiration. If you follow me for a while, you guys already know that Donald Clayton, especially her duology The Bells, is one of my absolute favorites. And I was so, 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 so honored to be commissioned by her for this book look. After steaming the wig with the plastic bag on, I just let it sit for about five minutes with the bag on to ensure the entire wig was evenly locked in with steam. And I just played with my fur babies while I waited. sat under the plastic bag for about five-ish plus minutes because I was playing with my doggy. Um, I'm just gonna take it off carefully, make sure nothing gets disrupted. And usually sometimes I'll get tiny little slip aways and I'm just gonna kind of stick them back up. But after that, now we're gonna hit it with some hairspray and I'm gonna be using the Got To Be Glued, the Blasting Free Spray, which is the yellow can. And I like to use this on all of my wigs and I'll also use it on my own hair too whenever I'm styling it. But this is also just to make sure that the curls all hold. But after that, we're just gonna let it sit somewhere hidden away from the cat so they don't mess with it um, overnight. And then hopefully when we take everything out, we can paint it a little bit. We're also gonna try to make that star headpiece, which I think I'm gonna work on right after this. And then maybe paint some little um, trolley trains that you that you see featured on the cover, but also in the story. That's how you get up to the Arcanum. And I wanted to feature those around my neckline. I can't promise it's gonna turn out exactly like this, but I just wanted to feature them here, especially because there's some really cute scenes that happen on the little trains in the beginning of the book. Ugh. Okay, so now that the wig and the paint is almost pretty much done, what I'm working on next is going to be our star post headpiece, ta-da! The way I saw it on my head was almost like a fascinator, if you guys have seen the fascinator, or like tiny pillbox hat. So something along that line where it's going to sit and float around my head with 
wire, which I may or may not spray paint silver. I also have some silver ones that I'm probably gonna use just so it can look on brand with the cover and also so I can still kind of pull from like the white and silver accents from the book cover. Kaja, stop messing with my stuff. Ah, here she is. So for this one, I have a little tiny wire black headband that's really thin so it can blend in with my hair a little bit better. And I also have, move my face chart, I have some holographic paper, which I may or may not use. Let me take a look, it has some really, really pretty blue and purples in it. Um, but I also got sticky, silly glitter sheet felt paper that I'm gonna cut some of my stars out. But I have this like white iridescent one that also has some green, purple, and pink shimmer to it. And I also have a silver one, which I'm going to make my stars out of. Kind of want the stars to look like they're zooming, flying, floating. These are star posts that are flying around everywhere around my head. And I think the way I want that to work is if you guys have seen my book look for uh, Chain of Iron by Cassandra Clare, I'll probably link or um, attach a picture or a video right now just to show you what it looks like. You see, like right here, ta-da, uh -huh, yeah, with my butterflies and my moths. I'm probably gonna try to do um, something similar to that, but in a different shape. Cause I liked how my moths looked like they were kind of floating and flying around my head. But for the star post specifically, I want them to kind of look like they're circling my head. So same kind of concept, different shape and different thing flying around the head this time. Oh. You're just trying to be on camera. So another idea, <laughs> yes. Another idea I had for this, um, so the wire that I purchased for this look already kind of comes in this wound up springy position already. So I'm probably thinking of maybe loosening up the spiral just to have that <laughs> kind of shape going around my head. If that uh, means anything, it's, you, you know, you, you get what I mean. It's gonna be spiraling and flying around my head. Um, but I don't know, this is, I should probably also grab my garden wire just to kind of have like, I don't want the spirally boop boop shape. I might make it a little wider, but we'll see. Again, we're just kind of playing everything by ear. <laughs> I'm gonna try to detangle this as best I can. Oh no, I think I made it worse. Oh. Go this way. This way. Huh? No, I tangled it up again. Where do you go? This way. This way. Ha ha! There we go. Once I got my wire unraveled, I played around for a bit to find out a general shape for how I wanted my wire to sit on my head. I knew what I wanted it to look like in theory. However, once I started working and shaping the wire, it took some maneuvering to find a close enough shape for what I was going for. The fact that the wire moved so much as well made it a little challenging to work with, but I liked that there was a moving element and figured it would still look cool and whimsical and would still fit the book vibe with the whole finished book look in motion. After finagling with the wire and adding some other extended parts of the wire, I ended up with what some people on my book look paint day stream uh, called a spiral wizard or witch hat shape, which was not really what I was planning on making, but I was really happy with how it came out because I thought it helped me fit the story vibe even more. With my glittery white felt craft paper, I'm tracing out various star sizes before cutting them out with an X-Acto knife. I did this just so I can tape and glue them back to back over my wire headpiece so when I'm moving around, you don't see the Sharpie marker trace marks and you get full glitter stars all around. I also held up and temporarily taped them to my wire headpiece as I was cutting to see how the star posts would sit. I didn't actually count how many stars I ended up with. <laughs> I got distracted watching stuff while tracing and cutting. It was actually very relaxing. But I also figured that I would save a few for paint day in case I wanted to glue any to myself or to other parts of me later on during paint day. But once that's done, I just did the same with my silver glitter felt so I had different stars across the whole headpiece. Okay, 
So I just tried to redo the shape that I did with the black wire with my aluminum silver foil wire. And I found out that the aluminum just isn't strong enough to be able to hold the shape even with movement on top of being able to hold the little star shapes that I just made. But I'm gonna spray the silver just so it looks like the aluminum that we have. And then if I want any like branch off moments or like specific you know, pokey bits where the star posts are going in other directions that I'm probably gonna use this as reserves. Um, just cause I still want it to look silver so you can see like they're, so it looks like they're shooting stars. But I'm gonna go be right back. I'm gonna spray this silver and then we'll just keep cutting out star pieces while we're watching TV. So yeah, <laughs> I'll be right back. Enjoy my cat as he cleans himself. Bazzy! The next day after work, I unrolled and brushed out my Marvelers wig, and I was pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. This was my first time styling a short wig and doing a much more structured style, and it turned out much closer to my face chart concept than I first expected, which usually isn't always the case. But once it was all unrolled and brushed out, I used a teasing brush to add some more volume and my got-to-be-glued hairspray to really place and style the hair. I really wanted the front bangs and sideways of the hair, all the parts of the front facing parts of the wig to be very smooth and structured curls. And once I got a basic shape that I wanted, I pinned my curlers and sectioning clips to hold the shape I wanted before hitting it again with even more hairspray. I kept all these in until paint day to ensure everything stayed in place until then. But after that, I wanted to see what all of the accessories would look like all together, so I also mounted my Marveler spectacles onto my wig block and started to build my star post wire headpiece onto the wig. The next accessory I worked on was my Marveler's mantle, which every student in the Arcanum gets to wear. There are different colors for each grade level. Freshmen like Ella wear white and then follows green, followed by blue. Because I wanted to be somewhat of a librarian slash upperclassman-like character, I primarily wanted my mantle colors to be blue, all while still incorporating the beautiful pinks, purples, and orange tones from the book cover. So I decided to treat my mantle almost like the night sky from the book cover and incorporate battery-operated twinkle lights as my star constellations. There's also a really neat scene in the book um, between Ella and her friend where she is gifted a magical gift that shimmers and shines with lots of fun colors and that was also another inspiration for this mantle accessory. I am not a sewer or seamstress whatsoever, though someday I would really hope to be. So a quick and easy DIY way I decided to construct this mantle was more like a cape so I could keep my chest and neck area open for my Sky Fairy necklace on paint day. If you've seen my Epic Reads book look and my behind the scenes video for Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar, I made my own clown collar out of string and tool and I'm using the same technique for my Marvelers mantle. To do this, I'm using some gold string and cutting up and tying several strips of glitter tool to create what almost looks like a tutu cape and I'm just continuing to smoosh as many tool strips as I can until it's nice and fluffy and whimsical looking. There was quite a bit of glitter fallout, so while I was tying each strip, I decided to keep as much of the glitter as I could to incorporate it into my makeup on paint day. I especially liked the blend of colors and how it looked all together. Um, it looked very similar to the book cover color palette, so I decided to keep it all. But once my mantle was as voluminous as I would like it, I laid the bigger blue and purple pieces of tulle over it all to sort of mute and blend the colors, and so I had a layer of tulle for the fairy lights to sit under on paint day. So I almost completely forgot to film this, but I'm working on my trolley necklace. I almost just got, I got so into the flow of painting these little necklaces, but right now I am working on our little trolley necklaces that's going to go on top of the tutu. Um, I painted a good majority of them already. I sketched out all three of them, but uh, I'm just going to start recording from here. Hopefully I catch some stuff that I can post up. But yeah, here we go. Here's what I'm working on. I'm just going to move you down. Maybe hopefully, I'm, my, hopefully my head doesn't block it. I tend to get super like way over what I end up painting. So hopefully I'm not blocking too much while I'm working on it. I also really like to listen to ASMR and um, other really calming things when I'm painting, uh, which is probably another reason why I forgot to film this, but here we go. I'm just gonna try to finish this up, listen to some ASMR, and yeah, get into the groove of painting again. It's so relaxing. 
To get an idea of how big to make my Sky Fairy trolleys, I used a digital picture of the book cover on my iPad to kind of gauge what size I wanted them to be. From there, I measured and started to draw and paint my trolleys. At first, I was planning on painting the trolleys on my chest on Book Look Paint Day, but figured I'd save myself some time in the chair, as well as challenge myself to try and make a necklace. Because the trolley carts are suspended from wire on the cover, I thought it would be really cool and fun to make them an accessory and have mine be suspended from necklace chains. At first, I wanted to try and make the trains as 3D as possible out of polymer clay, but when I test ran it off camera, the clay would end up being too heavy for the chains and they, would, they wouldn't they would hold a rounded hanging shape like they did on the cover. So I opted to paint them on watercolor paper instead. Usually whenever I'm building a book look, I often have to make my own custom pieces as you've seen here on my channel as well as online. I try to find and shop around for things that could be modified to fit each concept for each book look, but nine times out of 10, I usually have to make something by hand and in order to fit the book cover color design, especially the color palette, especially if I'm pulling inspiration from the actual story. And for the Marvelers, the Sky Fairies are such a notable and recognizable piece in the world and the story that I, I had to make them as custom and as to the T as I possibly could, plus they were just really fun to make. And of course, if you know me, no matter how big or small something is, I must add glitter. So I'm dusting some gold glitter on my trolleys before cutting them out with an X-Acto knife. And once those are all cut out, I'm trying them on with my three strand chain necklace and just adjusting the length as I go. Since I have my big poofy Marvelers mantle, I just wanted to make sure you could still see the Sky Fairy trolleys and they wouldn't get too covered up by the makeup and the accessories. And once I found a good necklace length, I just marked where I wanted each fairy to hang with some gardening wire before linking it on with more gold links onto the necklace. But after finishing off my Sky Fairy necklace, we are done, woo! And all of the Marveler accessories were ready to wear for Book Look Paint Day, yay! I hope you all found this video helpful. If you try to recreate some of these pieces or even this look, please tag me in them, I would love to see your work. If you haven't yet, be sure to check out my full book look for The Marvelers by Daniel Clayton hanging out somewhere here on my channel. I wanted to especially thank Daniel Clayton for commissioning me for this book look. Daniel Clayton is my absolute favorite author and I was so honored and so grateful to create yet another look based on one of her amazing books. Ugh, I love her so much, she's so amazing. I just want to hug her and read everything she makes all over again. I'm also super excited to pick up book two for The Marvelers. It's hands down my absolute favorite read of 2022 and you should read it. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what book looks you'd like to see me do next and I'll see you all next time. Bye.